it's time to take a look at the volume of a pyramid. So let's quickly look at the volume of this cube. Well, we said that volume is always equal to the following. And then we said that the base that you choose, you have to choose the correct base so that when you drag it, it completes the rest of the shape. However, when you have a cube, you can't really go wrong. For example, you could choose this as your base. And then what you would have to do is just drag that green base upwards. Or you could choose this base here. And then you would just drag that whole green shape in that direction over there. So it drags all the way to the back. So with a cube, you have many different options. You can't really go wrong with that one. But let's say we did choose the bottom part. Well, then you would work out the area of that bottom part. So if it was a rectangle, you would just work it out as if it's a rectangle. And if it was a square, you'd work out its area as if it's a square. And that would give you the area of the base. And then you would just times it by the height or the length that you would have to drag it going up. And that would be the end. Let's see how a pyramid is very similar. So we would choose this as our base. And then if you had to drag the shape up, well, it would actually end up forming a cube, right? Because that part would go up like that. That part would go up there and over there. And then if you had to connect everything, you would actually form a cube. And so we have a bit of a problem because we wanted to form a pyramid, but it keeps giving us a cube when we drag that green block upwards. But what mathematicians have found out, and I think this is really, really cool, is, well, let me first ask you this. Would you expect the volume of the pyramid to be more or less than the volume of the big block over here to that big block over there. I know it's not drawn very neatly, but I'm sure you get the idea. So obviously the block would have the larger volume, right? Because the pyramid is slightly smaller. So what mathematicians have realized is that what you have to do is pretend that it is a block. And so you would handle it exactly the same way that we handled this one. And then all that you have to do at the end is divide your answer by three. And that is why in your textbook, or your teacher might tell you that the volume of a pyramid is a third A times by H. I mean, that's what most textbooks say. Let me explain. The third, well, that's this part over here, the three. The A, that stands for area of the base. And the H stands for the height. Now, the height that you use when you're doing volume is going to be this height over here. It's the height that goes from the middle of the pyramid, right at the top here, down to the center, so the part that's in, in the middle of that rectangle. That is the height that you want to use. So in summary, volume is always equal to area of base times height, but as soon as you have a shape that looks like a pyramid, then you must divide your answer by 